it breaks my heart. I mean, if you're a mom and you know your child could die at any given day and they have a horrible disease that needs medicine and the federal government saying you can't have that medicine, it's outrageous. This is Haley. Three years ago, she looked like this. Then a remarkable treatment gave her back her life. She's walking better. She's having conversations. You can see her personality. That was huge. Medical marijuana. But for many, it's also a miracle. You don't know what chronic pain is until you live it. MS. Sports injuries. This has the potential to save people. Epilepsy. He was on life support 17 times. Do you feel like CBD gave you your son back? Yeah. That's enormous. Tonight, the breakthrough new science behind medical marijuana. Might what you're doing be an answer to the opioid epidemic? If I didn't believe the answer to that question was yes, we would not be doing it. There are not this many people that it's helping by accident. I'm telling you, it works. I'm Lester Holt, and this is Dateline. Here's Harry Smith with Growing Promise. For years, marijuana users have called cannabis their medicine. And for much of that time, many of the rest of us thought that idea foolish or perhaps an outright lie. Yet in just the last two decades, voters or legislative bodies in 30 states and the District of Columbia have declared medical marijuana legal in direct conflict with federal law, which states marijuana is a Schedule I drug as dangerous as heroin or LSD and with no accepted medical use. Well, tell that to these people. A former pro football player. Cannabis has saved my life. A lifelong researcher. It actually does things that maybe no other drug can do. A US senator. Let's fix the, the public hypocrisy. Parents with severely ill children. He stopped breathing and they couldn't get the seizure to stop. What they have in common is cannabis a plant brimming with promise. Could demon weed, in fact, be a wonder drug? Could it be a lifesaver? Maybe the answer to America's opioid epidemic. Compounds in cannabis could really help people come off of opiates. Come on. Come on. If you want to get your heart broken, then talk to the parents of a child with extreme, uncontrollable seizures. Thus far, traditional medicine, in many cases, has offered little help leaving parents to search elsewhere. I hit rock bottom with her. Perhaps you'll remember the story of Charlotte Figgy, a little girl with a rare and severe form of epilepsy. We introduced you to her three years ago, a child who had been so sick and so often hospitalized, her mother began to lose hope. The hospital said, we don't have anything left to do. We're, we're sorry. Um, you should just go home and deal with this at home. Go home and watch your child die. I was praying for her to die because it was so bad to watch the suffering that she's going through. You just wish for it to stop. Desperate, Paige combed through the internet, made seemingly endless numbers of calls, and finally found an answer, something called CBD oil, a non-psychoactive compound found in cannabis. She's catatonic, and I put it in her feeding tube and just waited to see if it would work. And it just stops? Yep. Her seizure stopped, and she didn't have a side effect. The Figgies were fortunate to live in Colorado, where medical marijuana was legal. What are you doing? In Virginia, as word of Charlotte's successful treatment with CBD oil spread, other parents started to mobilize. So it's just some relief knowing that it's closer. Here and elsewhere, it was up to parents of sick children to win the hearts and minds of state legislators, many who were predisposed to be anti-anything to do with marijuana. Are there moments in your life, if someone had tapped you on the shoulder 10 years ago and said, you're gonna become an important advocate for medical marijuana, what would you have told them? <laughs> I would have said, no, I'm not, I'm a Girl Scout mom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to talk my kids out of using marijuana. Lisa Smith met Beth and Patrick Collins five years ago, parents of children with severe epilepsy. Their plan, to lobby the state legislature of Virginia. Their goal, to win the right to possess CBD oil and THCA oil, both made from marijuana. Neither can get you high, but both can make you well. 
when that. it was heard in the first committee, I had a senator that heard it and said he saw the title of it, not who was presenting the bill, and just put it aside and said, I will not vote for this, just because it had cannabis in it, or marijuana was in it. The and word marijuana is mm -hmm. And he said, I will not vote for this. The legislators didn't want to be in conflict with the federal government and its declaration that marijuana was not only dangerous, but had no medicinal value. But they were at a disadvantage, especially when the sick children showed up. I know the long-term effect of, of uncontrolled seizures. It'll be cognitive decline and premature death. Haley, Haley <laughs> changed his mind. He did change his vote. Oh yeah, he was impacted because Haley had a seizure in committee. I reached out to him and said, you know, if you'd like to discuss this further, we'd be happy to come in. And we met with him one evening and he said, I never knew of kids like Haley. I, you know, he was thinking of the stoner type. Stoners, these parents are not. You get to that point where you're like, well, how harmful can it be? We're out of options. Parents desperate for options, where traditional medicine simply could not provide an answer. I mean, there's only so many anti-epileptic medicines you can take, and the nature of the side effects are so horrific. It became unbearable. We were out of options, and Jen, we were losing her. Um, and she had, was, was not in her right mind and violent and... A side effect of the drugs. Side effects. effect of the drugs. Suicidal. On a chilly February morning three years ago, they did it. Okay, folks, it is now law. <laughs> the law passed allowing them to possess the oils in their home state of Virginia. Lisa Smith's daughter, Haley, has Dravet syndrome, a rare and severe form of epilepsy. Ready for your oil? Ready? Oh, She's been using the cannabidiol oil, also known as CBD, for three years now. Open. Its effect has been nothing short There's of remarkable. Bye. She's walking so better. Cool. She's having conversations. Before it was just set phrases that she learned from Barney or the Wiggles. Row, 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 row. You're about her cognitive skills have just skyrocketed, and her seizures are down about 60%. Is it an animal? No. She's got this new thing where she makes riddles, and she's got to guess what she's thinking about. And she'll be like, I'm thinking about something big. Does it have ladders? Tall ladders. Tall ladders. Yes! And she gets really excited that you, you guess what it is. Would that ever would have happened three years ago? No, no, there was no conversation. No conversation with her that was meaningful. Get the legs ready! Haley has impressed others as well. Can you take one hand off? Vicki Vermeer has been Haley's physical therapist for eight years. The oil's made a huge difference. We've really noticed that you can see your personality. Before it was just this flat affect. Come While these families had success in getting laws in Virginia changed, they still faced resistance. Some doctors believe in it, but are afraid to say they are. Yeah. Through this legislation, we've met so many amazing families. Armed with the momentum of their success in Virginia, the parents brought their case to Washington, D.C. Along for the trip, Beth and Patrick's daughter, Jennifer, who suffers from Javon syndrome, another severe form of epilepsy. People worry that medical cannabis is a gateway drug, and we know that's not true. And for me, medical cannabis has been a gateway to a better life. Medical cannabis has saved Jennifer's life. It's saved our family, too. And it's saved so many people's lives. Despite what they've seen with their own eyes, what these families don't have is lab-tested scientific evidence of the curative powers of cannabis. It's on its way. When we come back, a dramatic breakthrough. It's the first time that we got solid scientific data that a cannabis-based product works to treat a form of epilepsy. Good one. Do you feel like CBD gave you your son back? Yeah. Gonna make Harry cry. <laughs> cannabis plant has been on this planet for millions of years. Ancient civilizations from Greece to China and from Egypt to India relied on it as a basic medicine. Yes, from the Han Dynasty to Herodotus, cannabis was the preferred remedy for everything from fevers and pain relief to hemorrhoids. 
Spread your fingers wide apart like I did. Arnon Davinsky right is a super doctor. Look over here. He's the director of the NYU Langone Comprehensive right. Epilepsy Center. And he is a widely published researcher who also teaches neurology, neurosurgery, and psychiatry. And he knows a thing or two about cannabis. I love the history of neurology and very well-known English neurologists back in the late 1880s were prescribing cannabis, Indian hemp, to treat epilepsy with some very remarkably positive anecdotal stories of patients who went on it, became seizure-free. Word of CBD's reputation as a healing agent has spread to modern America, where health food fans and hipsters are gobbling up CBD oil, sold as hemp, the psychoactively benign cousin of cannabis. Armed with piles of anecdotal evidence and motivated by stories of people like the Smiths, Davinsky decided it was time to run CBD oil through the scientific gauntlet. But remember, the Drug Enforcement Administration insists even non-psychoactive CBD is still a Schedule I drug. So... I had to buy massive safes to store the drug in. We had to get engineers to make sure the floor in a relatively new building could sustain the weight of the safe. They're making the studies much more time-consuming, took six months to get the approvals of full-time people, many regulatory hoops to jump through. But jump, Davinsky did. He launched a big study on a drug called Epidiolex, funded by its maker, GW Pharmaceuticals. So this was the first large, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial of a cannabis product, cannabidiol, CBD, to treat a very specific group of children with Dravet syndrome, a severe epilepsy. Good job. When news of the Epidiolex study first began to spread through the epilepsy community, few were more interested than Teresa Elder, another of the Virginia mothers who'd lobbied in Richmond. Teresa's 25-year-old son, Tommy, has been ravaged by seizures since he was a toddler. I mean, for years, we were the only family in the hospital that we knew that had a kid that was with uncontrollable seizures. Many times they had to sedate him so bad or so much, um, and then he would end up on life support. That one, good one. But Teresa felt trapped in the gray area between state and federal law, and breaking federal law was a risk she was not willing to take. You're breaking federal law to cross the state lines to get it into Virginia. Really? Yes, because I could go to D.C. and get some right now. But as soon as I cross into Virginia, I've broken a federal law. And Teresa is an employee of the federal government. So getting Tommy in the Epidiolex trial was her best shot. And I believe it was the first time I ever prayed that he would have a really bad brain wave just because he had to get in this study. He had to. You're a funny man, Thomas. Which, it turns out, he did. Your prayers were answered. Oh, yeah. Tommy was accepted into the trial. And the results? Describe the changes. In a two-year period, he was on life support 17 times. In these last two years, he's been on one time. One time. Seizure reduction. The number of seizures are probably between 60 and 70 percent. Down. Down. The severity of the seizures are down. The recovery period after having such a long seizure and then he's so wiped out is down, like it, like it takes him less time to recover. And what they did is the snack What Davinsky's research showed is game changing. CBD worked, just as parents of children with epilepsy have believed. And the study showed that cannabidiol significantly exceeded placebo in its ability to reduce convulsive seizures. So that is really a milestone in cannabis medicine. So it's the first time that we got solid scientific data that a cannabis-based product, cannabidiol, works to treat a form of epilepsy. How big a breakthrough was this news about cannabidiol? For any of these epilepsies that are really treatment resistant, any new therapy that really moves the needle in some direction, for which some group of children have a dramatic response and many of the children have a modest response, is a huge improvement. We know that anything we do to reduce seizures helps improve lifespan and prevent death. Is he more present? Yes, much more cognitive. He understands more. He looks at people when they talk. It kind of was like he was in a fog before. Just taking away the seizures, you can see the light bulbs going off and the brain starting to connect. Did you have a good day at work? Are you off? 
but a lifetime of seizures, too, and the buddy. resulting brain damage means Tommy will likely never speak. Still. Do you feel like CBD gave you your son back? Yeah. Yeah, I think if we could have started it earlier, it might have been a lot different. We started it when we could start it, and for the last two years, it's, it's really been wonderful. Gonna make Harry cry. <laughs> We've seen what cannabis can do for children suffering seizures. There are many others, though, suffering from other diseases, hoping for the same results. Coming up. You don't know what chronic pain is until you live it. A teacher struggling with pain and with the law. There was no way I was going to break the law. But at the same time, how am I going to take care of myself? When Dateline continues. <laughs> Among the moms who have joined the lobbying efforts in Virginia, a new member, school teacher Tamara Netzel. Her interest is personal. She herself is searching for legal cover to use CBD oil. There you go. I'm just thankful and grateful for everybody here starting this because I was only diagnosed five years ago. You have worked so hard. And I'm, I'm benefiting from that. I'm very thankful. Tamara has multiple sclerosis, a disease capricious in nature and devilishly difficult to treat. With multiple sclerosis, you get a cold, you get any kind of virus or, or anything that can trigger your symptoms to get worse. Um, so and at the same, same time, the drugs they give you bring your immune system down. So then you're more vulnerable to those things too. So. It's really a horrible catch 22. <laughs> it is. One of the drugs she was taking for MS almost killed her. You know, I didn't know what was going on, and my husband, you know, I sent him home to get my things, and his sister's a nurse, and he had called her on the way. We didn't know what that meant, you know, elevated liver enzymes, you know. He told his sister my numbers, and his sister was like, she's dying. You know she's dying, right? So, it's pretty scary. It's a lot to go through. Tamara suffers constant neuropathic pain. You don't know what chronic pain is until you live it. Chronic pain is, you know, I can tell the, the pain scales that they tell you at the doctor, you know, one to 10, doesn't even describe it. But think of a four, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, ongoing, nonstop, no end in sight. It changes your mood. <laughs> it changes how you interact with people. It's and it's exhausting. A co-worker suggested she try cannabidiol. This hurts a lot more. But Netzel felt trapped. CBD oil in Virginia was only approved for epilepsy patients, no other illnesses, and possession of CBD oil by federal standards is still illegal. There was no way I was gonna break the law, but at the same time, how am I gonna take care of myself? And at the time, her husband, Tom, was a full bird colonel in the U.S. Army. You grow up, your husband in the military for 26 years. It's a big thing. It's a patriotism and, and all that, a teacher. <laughs> he was not enthused about having an illegal substance in his home. I was still in the military and I was, was worried about it, but we, we were desperate and I, it was worth a try, so. So we tried it. So strong for me, hold it. Her pain abated. Any problems on that side? Mm -mm. The CBD oil, I put a little under my tongue, and it was minutes. I feel this warm rush down my arms. I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> like it was a relief. What does it mean to you that he has your back? It means a lot. I feel safer to fight for myself, and I feel like I can do this. I don't have to sneak around. I don't have to, you know, hide it just to help myself. Decorated officer, so hardcore conservative, and out of the closet for cannabis. Well, I think you can't change the, the dialogue without telling people the story. So 
So if nobody knows somebody that's personally involved in something, then they, they don't have a personal connection with the story and nor do they care about it changing. But some in Washington have made that connection, including New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, Democrat. As a mother, and some of those moms that we've talked to have been in your office, what do you see when they walk in the door? It, it breaks my heart. I mean, if you're a mom and you know your child could die at any given day and they have a horrible disease that needs medicine and the federal government saying you can't have that medicine, it's outrageous. I mean, I can't believe we could treat these families with so much callousness. It is absolute disregard for the well-being of their family, the ability of their children to survive, the ability for a child to grow up, to learn how to walk and talk and ride a bike. That's what this medicine does for these kids. And so it makes me so angry because it's just morally wrong. It is wrong to say giving the child the medicine that the child needs is illegal. It's wrong. Colorado Republican Senator Cory Gardner admits trying to right that wrong to date has been difficult. It's hard to make public policy on anecdotes. And what we ought to be doing is dealing with the best facts that we have. Uh, this is a country that has approved and researched remarkable innovations. We can do this with something that's been around for a millennium. Gardner, not a fan of recreational marijuana, says if medical marijuana has benefits, the federal government should make them easier to discover. You know, when I was a kid, there were certain TV stations that you watched uh, to catch up on the reruns of shows that ran 20 years ago. Sometimes I think Washington is stuck in reruns when it comes to public policy. Uh, they're 10, 15, 20 years behind public opinion. But many out there refuse to wait. Coming up. You're the big tough guy from the NFL and you can't open the, the jar of pickles. Crippled by pain, he once turned to pills, but not anymore. The only pills I swallow are vitamins. This is medicine. This has the potential to save people. For Eugene Monroe, the gym is his refuge. Working out, he says, makes him feel better. For the former pro football player, has a list of injuries a mile long. There we go. Tons of concussions, and with most of the concussions, I had neck injuries as well, and definitely have signs of arthritis in my neck. That bothers me on a daily basis. Three knee surgeries, torn labrums, a bad back, broken and dislocated fingers. He may look like the picture of health, but looks can be deceiving. You can have some Xavier. Like when his wife no, look, recently look asked him for help in the kitchen. Wait a minute, you're the big tough guy from the NFL and you can't open the, the jar of pickles? Even if your fingers are jacked up, you'll get it done somehow. I mean, we do get the jars open eventually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Monroe grew up on the wrong side of the tracks in Plainfield, New Jersey, during the crack epidemic. Drugs were everywhere, including his own household. So what was your attitude as a young person, as a teenager, toward drugs? I hated any and all things to do with drugs. I was the poster child for, like, anti-drugs. I was leading the war on drugs in my own community. Monroe played college football at the University of Virginia then a seven-year career in the NFL in Baltimore and Jacksonville. So by and large, do you look back at your time in the NFL positively? I loved it. Everything about it was awesome. There is a price for awesome, though. Everything's got a price. The price Monroe and others pay is measured in pain, pain that often gets worse the longer you play. And for years in college and professional football, the relief from pain was provided by opioids. He says the industry standard. Old injuries become chronic injuries, uh, which bother you daily. But you still have to perform. And opioids surely do help you push through that. And that's why so many people took so many of them. Monroe says he was never addicted, but he did rely on them especially after surgeries, until his last surgery. A few days after my surgery, I was taking them and 
Uh, my daughter was walking up to me, like, oh, who's this kid here? What's up? Like, it's, but it was my daughter. You didn't recognize her. I didn't her. recognize her, so I, I stopped taking them. Come say hi to Chicken. Eugene's wife, Nerea, observed her husband's decline. I definitely had a low moment, going through a little bit of depression, um, really feeling like I was helpless, not being able to do anything for him. And again, that's, that's horrible. Mommy's crying. I was crying. It felt like the game of football and the drugs Eugene was being prescribed were taking her husband away. I remember thinking that this is year five and he's talking about he wants to play another five years. I don't know where he's going to be, where his head's going to be. Uh, you know, right now it's just misplacing his cell phone or putting it into the refrigerator. But what is it going to be later? Is he going to know who I am? Is he going to wake up in the morning and not know who his kids are? Monroe feels the NFL has made a bad choice. While league doctors write prescription after prescription for opioids, the NFL drug policy still prohibits the use of cannabis. In fact, players who test positive for cannabis can be suspended for a year. Pretend you're in a hotel. You get in an elevator with Roger Goodell. You know you have a finite amount of time to tell him something really important. What do you tell him? People are dying and we have a chance to stop it. And the changes that we could make could have a positive effect on millions of people. Let's have a grown-up discussion about marijuana. How has cannabis changed your life? Cannabis has saved my life. Cannabis has removed pharmaceuticals from my life in every shape or form. The only pills I swallow are vitamins. Eugene is convinced marijuana works, but he wouldn't mind a little science to back it up. I think it's possible that CBD or potentially other compounds in cannabis could really help with some of the opiate cravings and help people come off of opiates, especially for disorders like pain, where the opiates stop working, you become used to them and require more and more, which is where the real danger comes from. Monroe's conversion to cannabis believer is best reflected in his investments. Um, we're actually looking into doing ethanol extraction. You yeah. know, he co-owns dispensaries and processing labs in five states, including Maryland, where he lives and where it's medically legal. For me, just thinking about him and a drug, being a black man in America, it was just really, it was, I wasn't really for it. But now I can see that um, it's opening up opportunities. I hope that he continues to fight the good fight and um, bring it to the masses. What frustrates him most? The rules and laws at the federal level that still restrict the study and use of the plant he says is saving his life. If you believe, whether it's good or bad, if people are willing to fund studies for it, let them happen. This is medicine. This has the potential to save people. And preventing that is it's evil. It's, it's straight up evil. So has the government been on the right side or the wrong side in the controversy over cannabis? In fact, it's been on both. Coming up. Mike, what you're doing be an answer to the opioid epidemic? If I didn't believe the answer to that question was yes, we would not be doing it. The next frontier in marijuana medicine. Give me a, a hand signal. Potential is where? Way up there. When Dateline continues. On a dingy edge of Doylestown, Pennsylvania, an old factory has been converted into a biotech incubator. This is a place where new, life-changing drugs are developed, and that is the aim of this man. I'm Doug Brenneman. I'm a neuropharmacologist that has had a background as an NIH scientist for 22 years. In addition, uh, after I left NIH, I joined uh, Johnson & Johnson, where I was a team leader focused on central nervous system therapeutics. Another reason we Doug has spent the last five years researching cannabis, a substance about which he is completely conflicted. One part he likes, one part he loathes. I also developed a strong interest in CBD and also a very strong aversion to THC, which I believe has no redeeming qualities. 
interesting dichotomy. Very. It's an extraordinary dichotomy. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's where I'm at. You heard that right. Dr. Brenneman is no fan of marijuana, but when he learned about the potential of CBD, he changed his mind. So when it comes to cannabidiol, would you describe yourself as a convert? Yes, unequivocally. Learning yeah. part of the brain. The power the behind Brenneman's conversion? Yeah. In his research for the biotech firm Canalife, he discovered CBD can be a game changer as a treatment for pain. Oh, man. The kind of pain Eugene Monroe feels every day. The kind of pain for which opioids have been the prescribed answer. The same opioids that claim the lives of 60,000 Americans every year. Number one use of cannabis and CBD, and that is getting rid of intractable pain. Might what you're doing research on right now be an answer to the opioid epidemic? If I didn't believe the answer to that question was yes, we would not be doing it. What might this mean in that context? Well, CBD actually can form an alternative, uh, actually in terms of getting people off of opiates without the abuse potential. Imagine a kind of pain reliever that doesn't just provide comfort, but could save lives. That's huge. It's enormous, <laughs> exactly. So there's lots of reasons, and you've just hit on a big one. Do we know that that's, in fact, the case now? No. Is it experimentally addressable? Yes. It's the science behind pharmaceuticals. Dean Petkanis is the CEO of Canalife, where Doug Brenneman is working on cannabidiol. What's the number on the patent? It's 6630507, uh, and the title is Cannabinoids as Antioxidants and Neuroprotectants. That's a U.S. patent? It is. Be prepared to be confounded in one of those classic governmental right hand not knowing what the left hand is doing sort of fiascos. On the one hand, the DEA says pot has no medicinal use. And on the other, the National Institutes of Health believes cannabis could be big medicine. In fact, the NIH has a patent on pot. I mean, the government has a patent that says there's something in marijuana that has medicinal value? Yes, the government has a patent that was developed by inventors in an intramural research project through NIH, through National Institutes of Health, so it's taxpayer funded. Petcanis has licensed the patent, which means he can use certain cannabis-based compounds and develop them into medicines. Medicines that could turn into the payday of a lifetime for him and the government. Reading the government's patent, a lot of research went into it. And when you look into that, you realize that some very prominent scientists turn their attention to these structures, how they would be useful as medicine in the treatment of these diseases, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, uh, Down syndrome. On top of that, Petcanis claims CBD can be an effective treatment for concussions, traumatic brain injury, and CTE, the disease that plagues a number of former football players. In the area of traumatic brain injury, a concussive injury, or CTE, the potential is to reverse toxicity, protect the brain. Protect, protect the brain. Right, protect the brain, before, during, and after. How big a breakthrough is this potentially? This is all new country, Harry. This is stuff that, because of the restrictions of the Controlled Substance Act, nobody touched cannabinoids at all. They just left it there and left it alone. Back in the Canalife lab in Pennsylvania, Dr. Brenneman is hard at work trying to determine for certain if weed is really a wonder drug. Give me a, a hand signal. Potential for cannabidiol is where? Way up there. Right. And I say that from just the breadth of therapeutic areas which it's relevant to. The anecdotal evidence here is something that really gets your attention. Why don't we have the clinical goods here to make the case? Mm -hmm. And it all comes down to the scheduling of this compound as a Schedule One compound. But is all that about to change? Open. You've heard from parents, from researchers, and what our goals are with an entrepreneur. CBD. Good. 
and a former pro football player. All have extolled the virtues of medical marijuana. Who you will not hear from is federal law enforcement. Our request for interviews with the Drug Enforcement Administration, the Department of Justice, and the Attorney General of the United States were all turned down. What we had hoped to do was show them this video. And my daddy is very strong. Oh, Haley Smith is a different child after three years of taking CBD oil. One recent poll shows more than 90% of Americans think medical marijuana should be legalized. But that's why it should be regulated. Among them, Senator Gillibrand. Is Washington at fault here for something? Is there blame to be placed somewhere? Absolutely. Congress has not done the right thing. They have not moved this off Schedule 1 to Schedule 2 so the research can be done. Congress has not listened to their constituents who are overwhelmingly saying, we want marijuana to be legalized, we want it to be available to patients, we want normal research and regulation. A Republican colleague from Colorado, Cory Gardner, agrees, but says marijuana still carries a stigma in Washington, and change will not be easy. I think it's a matter of education. I'll, I'll never forget, I, I, I had one member of Congress when I was trying to explain to him medical marijuana and, and the tax laws and other things, and this member's comment was, well, y'all might have potheads in Colorado, but I got Baptists. And they're just like, well, that's, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. You have good reflexes. Researcher and epilepsy expert Oren Davinsky couldn't agree more. If you could knock on the door of the DEA or of Congress, what would you tell them? I would not say maybe we should reschedule this drug. I would say we absolutely have to reschedule the drug. Should marijuana be a Schedule One drug? Absolutely not. There are known medical uses. Their patients have used this drug. They, they benefit from it. It has medical impacts. There's no way under any scenario this should be a Schedule One drug. You know there are people who are watching this and just, you're playing to the marijuana crowd. You're playing to the demographics. You're mm -hmm. playing to who knows who, but that stuff, I don't want that evil weed in my town. I don't think they'll feel that way if they know it is the best medicine for veterans who have PTSD. I don't think they'll feel that way if they know there are children suffering across this country who have 100 seizures a day that you could end overnight with the right medicine. We owe it to these patients and families to identify new therapies. At an FDA hearing just weeks ago, committee members signaled that Epidiolex from Dr. Davinsky's research will likely become the first cannabis-based medicine to be approved by the federal government. Senator Gillibrand believes the day medical marijuana is legalized and regulated at the federal level is coming, perhaps sooner than you think. I think we get this done in the next two years. Really? I really do. I think it's, it's moving very fast. I think the national conversation about it is changing. I think constituents are now bringing this up to their members of Congress, and I think there will be less room to be against uh, certainly medical marijuana. Meanwhile, people who believe medical marijuana is an effective treatment for themselves or their children still have the task of lobbying their state legislatures. The Virginia families, bolstered by new arrivals to their group like Tamara Netzel, this year won permission for any patient with any medical condition legal access to the oils epilepsy patients can use. I'm so glad you. you called me five years ago from Colorado. It's a you battle they wish they didn't have to fight, but for the victories they have won, they are grateful. How big a difference has medical marijuana made in Jennifer's life? Life changing. Life changing. Saved her life. It has saved No her doubt, life. no question. She is a different child now, and she has hope. She has hope to have some kind of a normal future, and before... That wasn't there. What would you tell people out there who are, are listening to you and still have serious doubts? I'd, I guess I'd beg them to really read and listen and do the research, because I'm telling you, it works. You can't judge a book by its cover. You can't hear the word marijuana and say no. There are not this many people that it's helping by accident. I mean, it works. And for the Smith family, a first this past Christmas. A family vacation. What's the most important thing I need to know? It changes lives. I mean, it gives you a life. I mean, Haley was pretty much just existing before this. And to some extent, our family was just existing. Now we're, we're living. 
That's all for this edition of Dateline.